If you want to see one of the most pathetic things ever, just stick around. It's just sad how far religion has fallen to the point that they just have to lie to people to even hope to get their attention. Of course, this comes from that paragon of Christian virtue, Prager U, so I guess we can't really be surprised. So, let's go take a look. It's been a really long time since we did a PragerU video around here, and I know they suck, but sometimes we just need to laugh. This time, a Christian therapist, Erica Komisar, explains that even atheist parents should teach their kids about God. And I will agree, but not in the way that I'm sure she thinks. So, should we all just indoctrinate our kids? Well, what's wrong with indoctrination? Let's push forward and see. As a therapist, I'm often asked why depression and anxiety are so common among children and adolescents. Oh, there's a lot of reasons, but I suspect she's going to say because they aren't taught about God or something stupid like that. Now, I have my own suspicions, but it really goes beyond the purview of the video, and unless she brings up something specific, I'm going to try very hard not to sidetrack the discussion. So let's just say that it has nothing at all to do with not believing in a god. In fact, being indoctrinated into a religion could just make it worse. And see where it all goes from here. One explanation, almost surely the most neglected, is declining interest in God and religion. See what I tell you. Now, granted, that was a pretty easy guess. So I guess I'm going to have to at least touch on it to some degree. Don't say I didn't warn you. One of the jobs of parents is to raise their children to be mature, responsible adults who can handle adult responsibilities in the real world. Largely, people in the last generation, maybe a little before, have really failed to do that. Instead of saying, well, here's how you be an adult, it's turned into, well, the government is going to take care of you. Instead of expecting people to make intelligent, rational decisions by the time they turn 18, childhood has been extended pretty much indefinitely. Instead of teaching your kids how to mature and get jobs and have families and things like that, today it's, well, go live in the basement for the rest of your life because everything isn't easy. Because here's the reality for you. Life isn't easy. Life has never been easy. Life will never be easy. You have to work hard, and a lot of people these days, they just don't want to. Laziness has become an acceptable lifestyle. Screw that. So, sadly, society has, in a lot of ways, regressed back to the kind of thing that Christianity and other religions have been doing forever. Well, God will provide. If you're not getting your way, pray and God will come through. Except that doesn't actually work, which is why religion then turns to, well, you just didn't believe hard enough, and, uh, well, you're just a filthy sinner. None of this is how we get to maturity. It's just an absurd mess. I see the consequences of this in my practice almost every day, and this is not merely my personal observation. A 2018 Harvard study involving 5,000 people examined how being raised in a family with religious beliefs affects the mental health of children. Now, I'm going to link to the study down in the comments, but there are some serious problems with it. First, all of the findings can be linked to having a support system in childhood. It's not the actual religion that matters. You can do the exact same thing as an atheist by providing a supporting community around your children. Religion just does it as a consequence of its activities. That doesn't make it the only way to get there. Secondly, and the study notes this itself, one limitation of the study is that it consisted mainly of children of white females of relatively high family socioeconomic status and therefore might not be generalizable to a broader population. 
So the study doesn't actually address living in a religious household. It addresses living in a household of high socioeconomic status. I am not aware of any other studies that has tried to do the same thing for lower socioeconomic children, but I suspect it wouldn't get the same results. It also doesn't control for non-religious elements. Therefore, it didn't show that the religion itself, the actual beliefs and the practices of religion, not of a specific religion necessarily, but of religion in general, it never showed that those were actually necessary. This is why a lot of these studies need to be questioned, because they've all got a goal in mind up front. The study found that kids who attended a religious service at least once per week scored higher on psychological well-being measurements and had lower risks of mental illness. Correlation is not causation. I'm sure that kids who don't get beaten every day score pretty well on that too. Because here's the thing with a lot of these studies. They are pure confirmation bias. The researchers, they want to prove a thing. They go out and study the thing and invariably prove what they wanted to prove in the first place because that's what they really wanted to prove. There are insufficient controls to make the results actually indicative of reality. That's just what they wanted to prove. Because if you look at the authors of the study, one has a degree in theology, which really isn't that much of a surprise, and the other, she's had multiple studies published, including those on positive parenting improves aspects of health and well-being in young adulthood, and parental warmth and flourishing in midlife. So both of them are looking for pretty much anything that gets you to a certain perspective. It's why you really have to ask a lot of questions and expect some pretty detailed answers before you take any of these studies seriously. Weekly attendance was also associated with higher rates of volunteerism, lower probabilities of both drug use and early sexual initiation, and a sense of purpose. Sure, because that's what they've been indoctrinated into. That is not a surprise at all. Of course, that is also not the only way to get there. I describe both of my kids the same way, and neither of them have any religious beliefs at all. My kids don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do drugs, they don't sleep around. They're doing just fine without any belief in any gods whatsoever. They are happy, and they are healthy, and they are far ahead of most people their age. No gods required. Yet despite all the evidence that religious involvement leads to positive behaviors, Gallup reports that the U.S. has seen a 20% decrease in attendance at formal religious services in the past 20 years. Because religion sucks. Now, here's something that you'll see from PragerU a lot, and Dennis Prager leans into this pretty heavily, but they seem more concerned whether it gets you somewhere than whether it's true. Well, here's all of these positive benefits, so you should just play along. But it's all bullshit, though. None of it is defensibly true, period. If you think you ought to just lie to your kids just to get them potentially closer to an outcome that you like, then you are a terrible parent. You just are. If someone came up to me and said, well, Scientology can get you closer to blah, 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 I'd tell them to shove it because Scientology is stupid. I'll find a better way. And of course, the better way is typically reality. It's learning how to deal with the world that you actually live in instead of the childish fantasy land in your head. Because that seems to be what they're actually after. They're looking for quick and easy, but reality isn't quick and easy. It's hard. It takes a lot of work. Welcome to the real world. Maybe stick around and learn something. In 2018, the American Family Survey revealed that nearly half of adults under 30 do not identify with any religion. Oh, it's gotten a lot better since then. According to the most recent Pew Research study, it's up to 33% of people under 30 who are religiously unaffiliated, and of those that are part of Gen Z, more like 40% report not going to church. In pretty much all studies that I can find, religiosity has been going through the floor pretty consistently. Over the past 10 years, those who identified as white evangelical Protestants have fallen from 23% of the population 
to 13%. Catholics are down to 12.6%. As I said in a somewhat recent video, membership among Southern Baptists is falling about 100,000 a year. Whether the religious like it or not, they are dying, and it's not getting any better. In fact, the studies have shown that for those who leave religion behind, virtually none of them ever return. When people walk away, it's a one-way trip. From a purely psychological point of view, this is not a good trend. No, it's a great trend. It might not make you happy, but it makes me ecstatic. People shouldn't be religious. People should be rational. That's why I'm celebrating the Pew projections that show that by 2070, best case scenario, atheism will become the norm and Christianity will be down somewhere in the mid 30%. That's a good thing, because religion sucks. Nihilism, the belief in nothing, is a rich fertilizer for anxiety and depression. I don't know anyone who's actually nihilistic to the extent that they think it exists. I don't know anyone who thinks that life is absolutely meaningless. We just have to give it meaning on our own, which most people don't have a problem doing. Now, I suppose I understand that from a particular religious perspective. You might think that because you're used to not being able to think for yourself, well, somebody in the sky has to do it for you. You do what it says in a book of mythology or what some dude in a dress is saying from the pulpit. The idea that you get to make your own decisions, that's a pretty scary one for a lot of people. It doesn't mean anything, though, because that's how reality actually works. You make decisions, and then you deal with the consequences thereof. It's called being a rational adult. Most people don't want to do that. Too bad. In contrast, the belief in God, a guardian figure who loves us, is an invaluable source of support and comfort. So long as you do what you're told. If maybe you're gay, then yeah, not so much. What they really want you to do is conform. Do what they're telling you that this magical man in the sky wants, or else. Because let's be really honest, God doesn't love you unconditionally. Everything that God offers has strings, and that's even assuming that God is real in the first place, something for which they have absolutely no evidence whatsoever. God is just an imaginary friend with a bunch of humans that get to decide who he loves and who he hates based on their own personal beliefs and opinions. You can do a hell of a lot better than that. Try! I am often asked by parents, how do I talk to my child about death if I don't believe in God or heaven? Realistically, if you're raising your children right, then they already understand that the world is what the world is, like it or not. Everything dies. I die, you die, everything dies. The takeaway is that you have to actually care about people while they're here because someday they are going to be gone. Don't lie to them and say they're going away to a magical happy land in the sky because that's stupid. Enjoy them while they're here because someday they'll be gone. My answer is always the same. Oh, good. Tell comforting lies. Oh, I bet that's not what she's going for. Let's see. Fake it. There are many things you don't tell your children the full truth about. For instance, if your children hear about a tragedy that has occurred in your community, you tell them that it will never happen to them. We don't have a crystal ball and cannot know that bad things will not happen to our children. Yet we reassure them with a hopeful narrative. It depends on how old they are. To a five-year-old, no, probably not. They lack the maturity to handle it. To a teenager, though, yeah, why the hell not? If you've been raising them right all along, they ought to be able to handle it. It's why having kids that believe in Santa Claus is fine when they're young, but if they're a teenager, yeah, it's time to tell them the truth. Comforting lies are still lies. You have to be able to gauge when they are at a point where they can handle the truth. Of course, for the religious, and sadly for a lot of other people, the parents themselves aren't at that point where they can handle the truth either. They are still at the, but I really want it to be true stage. 
if you're an adult right now and you still can't handle living in the real world, you need to seek professional psychological help because you need it. Don't screw up your kids as much as you've screwed up yourselves. Be better than that. The same applies to believing in God in heaven. Even if you believe that when your life ends, your bones turn to dust and you are gone for eternity, such beliefs don't help children. Well, it's a hell of a lot better than believing that when you die, you go to a place where you're roasted for all eternity. Now, I presume that Christian parents don't tell their kids that because they hope that everybody's going to go to heaven. But that's not guaranteed, is it? And I have seriously seen Christian parents in a public place telling their misbehaving child that they're going to go to hell if they don't straighten up. Now, that's bad parenting to be sure, but it happens. As she says, such beliefs don't help children, but that's because nobody in their right mind should believe such nonsense. This is stupid stuff for anybody who pretends to have a brain. Sadly, a lot of Christians can't even make that claim. They're just dumb. They only scare them and create anxiety over death and dying. Nope. My kids never had that problem. They had pets that died, and they dealt with it. Now, they were sad, but they dealt with it. I didn't lie to them and say, well, you're going to see Rover again in heaven one day. Because that's stupid. It helped them to deal with life in the moment instead of just putting it off for some fantasy future. Because that's another problem with religion. A lot of hardcore believers, they never bother to live the only life they actually have. They're too busy quivering in fear of their imaginary friend trying to kiss its ass so they can get all the good stuff after they die. Well, guess what? There's nothing after you die, at least not that we can tell. So you blew your one and only chance on a complete load of BS because you're stupid. And now you want your children to be stupid too. I'm sorry, but that's child abuse. Knock it off. Belief in a benevolent God and a heaven does help children with their fear. No, it really doesn't. Maybe for the very, very young, but you don't need a God for that. My kids never needed it at all. In fact, we used to get called in when other kids would talk about God and... My kids would just laugh at them. We'd go in and we'd just laugh too. Of course they did, and they should. It was a stupid idea. Now, I'm sure it got some of the other kids to think about things a little more critically. I don't know whatever happened to them, and I don't really care. Who knows? Maybe it helped, maybe it didn't. I just hope it did. In our current age of broken families, distracted parents, school violence, and nightmarish global warming predictions, Imagination plays a big part in children's ability to cope. Unless they can handle the actual world that they live in. I mean, imagine that. Because nobody gets divorced like Christians. By and large, it's not atheists out there shooting up schools. This is just, well, lie to your kids because it's easier. Well, whoever said that raising intelligent, rational children was going to be easy? Again, my kids aren't screwed up. By their early to mid-twenties, both of mine are out there living their own lives, happy and healthy, and neither of them has a therapist, because neither of them needs one. They were properly prepared for the world, and they just went out and lived in it, all without needing to turn to an imaginary man in the sky. Imagine that. It is far better for kids to use their imagination constructing something positive, such as a God who cares about us. So, let me get this straight. You are acknowledging that God is just an imaginary friend, right? Believing in this nonsensical God because it gives you some supposed external benefits, even if it isn't real, that's what you're pushing? Uh, okay? So, if I say that invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies love us, then that would be a satisfactory substitute? because I don't think the religious would be on board with that, do you? Of course, we've seen Dennis Prager doing the same thing, and he's absolutely God-soaked. I think he's realized that trying to convince people that his imaginary friend is real is a complete waste of time. 
So now, so long as people just play along with him, he's going to pretend that it actually means something. Except it doesn't, does it? This is just, you should lie to your kids because we think it just might help. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's just stupid. Then the dark nihilistic idea that there's no creator and protector and no purpose to our existence. So, hide from reality. I don't even know what to say to this anymore. This is just utilitarianism. But it's not even Christian utilitarianism. If you lived in an area that had, say, a strong Hindu presence, then teaching your kids about Krishna would fit. Or if you were surrounded by Scientologists, then teaching your kids they had body thetans, that would also fit the bill. It doesn't even have to be a religion. Get your kids into a book club. They will get all of the socialization they need there. So long as they are told comforting lies, who cares, right? That's really what she's saying here. The truth of the matter doesn't matter, so long as they get those emotionally comforting tales that they can believe in. I mean, who the hell is this idiot? I am also frequently asked how parents can instill gratitude and empathy in their children. Not with a God belief. You don't actually have to care about anybody in Christianity. The only reason most Christians want to convert anyone else is so they don't have to be faced with the fact that there are other people out there who believe other things. It's all very self-serving. I want to make everyone just like I am. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. That's caring about others and not yourself. Sure it is. Tell me another one. Again, the best answer is involvement in an organized religion. It's involvement in an organized anything. If you want your kid to feel empathy towards other people, then having them around other people is going to do it. The religious part is entirely irrelevant. I'd really like to see a study done on what's best, locking your kids in a basement with a Bible or just letting them live healthy, happy, secular lives. I wonder which one would win. Of course, we'd never hear about that from Dennis Prager, would we? All traditional faiths encourage gratitude and empathy as antidotes to entitlement and selfishness. These are the building blocks of strong character. They also protect against depression and anxiety. Then why are there so many Christian counselors out there? Because you wouldn't think they'd exist at all if any of this was true, would you? I mean, these are some pretty simple questions that this idiot ought to be asking. I went and looked at the article she's written, and guess what? She wrote one, and only one, article about religion. The one that clearly led to this video. Otherwise, she's entirely secular, and she's in favor of things like abortion. Wonder if Dennis Prager knows that. Additionally, religion provides children a chance for community. Being with people who share their faith can act as a buffer against the emptiness and isolation of modern culture. So can any active group of people. You don't need religion. You just need human interaction. I mean, going back to my kids, I don't think either one of them has ever stepped foot in a church, or if they have, it hasn't been for a service. They just have friends. Tons of friends. People in person and people all over the planet. They have people that they can talk to. In fact, both of them are kind of the counselors of their group. Everybody talks to them and they help people solve their problems. They have people that they can relate to. They are constantly busy. They don't have time to be isolated. If your kids aren't busy, then you raised them wrong. This is a problem with poor parenting not a lack of religion. This is more necessary than ever in a world where teens can have hundreds of virtual friends and few real ones. So, let's advocate for another imaginary friend. Sure, that makes sense. And religion helps teach children mindfulness, a sense of self-control and discipline. Your young children might not be aware they are entering a house of worship but they do know they're supposed to act in an appropriate manner when they are there. They have to relax their bodies and calm their minds. And I'll agree, there are a lot of out-of-control children out there. But again, 
bad parenting, not lack of religion. This is where we have all of the problems. What she seems to be pushing for is a simple solution for lazy parents who don't want to take the time and effort to raise their children right. This is just a placebo. Stick him in a church and they'll calm right down. No, it doesn't work that way. Wonder why. It is true that if you feel ambivalent about God and religion, your children will likely follow your example. However, if you practice religion or send your children to religious school, knowing it is good for them, you might surprise yourself and get something meaningful out of it too. It's probably not going to do your kids any good because, based on statistics, the vast majority of them just walk away. According to a 2017 Lifeway research survey, 66% of religious children walked away from religion between the ages of 18 and 22. According to a 2011 Barna survey, only 30% of children remained involved in Christianity long term. A USA Today study found that nearly 75% of Christian young people walked away from the faith. These are pretty consistent numbers, both from religious and secular sources. Sticking kids in religion doesn't make them stick with religion. And given how many people are walking away from Christianity in general, it sure doesn't do much for the parents either. In other words, your children may bring you back to faith. It's certainly worth an extended experiment for their sake and for yours. No, because I just get thrown out because I don't know how to keep my mouth shut. Besides, I produced good children who became responsible adults entirely without religion. In fact, they're just as anti-religious as I am. I think I'll stick with what I can prove works. Thank you very much. Consider one more argument. If you take the idea seriously that your children should be free to choose or reject God and religion, they need to be exposed to God and religion. How else will they be able to make a free and informed choice? That's like saying if they're free to embrace or reject taking heroin, they should get shot up with heroin at a young age. But that's just stupid. You don't expose your children to dangerous things, and whether you like it or not, religion is dangerous to a developing mind. I mean, it's dangerous to everyone, but you don't just throw an innocent child into the deep end of the pool and hope they learn how to swim. They're more likely to get molested than to actually learn anything from religion. Let's not kid ourselves. We live in a competitive, stressful society that idealizes materialism, selfishness, and virtual rather than real human connection. Having a religious community and a belief in God is the best antidote to all of that. Okay, I'll agree with the real community bit. The belief in an imaginary father figure in the sky, though, hell no. This whole thing comes off sounding like, well, we've got a solution for your problems, and then just tacking God on the end. Because that's how religion works, isn't it? I don't get it, therefore God. The God part isn't justifiable, though, except as an emotional placebo. But they just keep it around because it makes them feel really good. You don't actually need God. You don't need religion. You just need people, because at least people are real. Whether children choose to continue to practice as adults is something you cannot control, but at least give them a chance to believe in God and find comfort in religion. They deserve it. Do they, though? Because we keep coming around to the problem that they don't actually know what they deserve. This is just religious people, and I've got no idea at all if she's actually religious or not, but this is just Dennis Prager's channel trying to push his cult, because he really likes the idea, and if he has to just lie to people to get them through the door, well, he's only too happy to do it. It just shows what a complete douchebag Prager is, and everybody on his channel as well. These are not people concerned at all about the truth, and that's really all that matters. The fact that they have to sink to this level to get anyone to consider religion, that's pretty telling. Nobody with a brain would ever consider any of this on their own, so they just have to lie to them to get anyone to take a look. That's a good sign as far as I'm concerned, because it proves just how badly they're losing.